मधुबाता रेतायते मधुक्षरंति सिंधव मधुए न संतोषधे मधुनक्तम उतोषसी मधुमत पार्थिव गुमरजहम मधु दावरस्तु न पिता मधुमन नवनस्पतिर मधुमागुमस्तु सूरजहम मधुविर्गांबो भवंतु न ओम शांति 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 हे May the winds flow sweetly. May the rivers flow sweetly. May days and nights be sweet to us. May the trees and plants be sweet to us. May the dust of the earth be sweet to us. May the heaven that protects us be sweet to us. May the sun shine on us sweetly. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be blissful. Om, peace, 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 be enthroned. Friends, this evening we have a guest speaker, Swami Kirpamayananda, head of the Vedanta Society of Toronto, Canada. Whenever any visiting Swami comes, we try to take some advantage so that our devotees can learn something new from different swamis of our order. So he was he came to conduct a retreat in Ganges in Chicago, and then first he went to Pittsburgh, then Cleveland, then came here from here to Chicago, then Chicago he will be back to Toronto. So I requested him, please come and give a talk. He agrees. So this evening his topic will be spiritual life. It is a broad subject. Each person understands spirituality according to his own way. But do you know what is? I remember I started a series in when I came to Saint Louis. Any Swami would come, I would ask him, give a lecture, what is Vedanta? And we have many lectures on that topic, and each Swami spoke differently. So spiritual life also, each person from his own perspective, what he practices, what he has learned, those things the Swami will share with us. Spiritual talk. Shami Kripa Mahananda. Thank you. My obeisance to <coughs> God Almighty manifested as Sri Ramakrishna and all the great teachers of mankind. My pranam to Swami Chitranandji Maharaj and good evening to you all. I'm grateful to Swami Chitranandji for giving me this opportunity to meet you all then speak to you on the subject that you know as much as I know, or perhaps more than what I know. You have lived a spiritual life, have tried to make the life spiritual, and are eager to find perfection and maturity in spirituality. We are all trying for that, how to transcend the worldliness and mature into spirituality. We know that spirituality means peace, joy, and connection to the reality. Worldliness is suffering, ignorance, bondage, limit. So spiritual life, human beings have two selves, as it were. The apparent self, the empirical self, and 
the real self. The apparent self is that I, or you feel, what do you know who you are? So I am this man, this woman, this height, this color. So like that we consider ourselves to be what we perceive as our body, if you go deeper, as our mind. And there it ends, body-mind combination, and that becomes the empirical self. That is uh, what uh, interacts with the world. But there is another self, which is the cause of this empirical self, and that is the real self, the eternal self. That is the true self, that is our true identity, which we have not yet perceived. When we perceived our, perceive our true real self, we have found out the answer to a spiritual quest. We start living in spiritual life. So far, we try to be spiritual. We try to lead a spiritual life. But yet we are precipitated or we are weighed to worldly life. But we know, by the grace of God, that worldly life can be transcended and we can live a life of peace and blessedness and without any worries and anxieties and fear, knowing that this empirical self, <coughs> this body-mind are subject to natural laws and it has changes that it goes, it is born, it exists, it grows, it matures, it declines and it dies. And we accept that truth, that reality of this empirical self. When we touch the real self, then these all changes become like a scenario, like a story that goes through. And when we are not able to touch the real self, then we ourselves feel we are changing, we are growing old, we are meeting death, we'll be gone. And that type of idea comes when we are not yet established in spiritual life. Sri Krishna knew that human beings in this world, as they are created, have to learn to live a spiritual happy life. They are all here. They have been given all quality and capacity to lead a spiritual life. And yet they very much suffer in the worldly life. And he said, anityam asukham lokam. That is not your mistake, my dear friend, says Sri Krishna. This world is without happiness. What you see, little happiness and here and there, it is like very temporary. It just comes and goes. It has no existence. Very temporary. Anityam. This jaw is anityam. And that's why asukham. There is no permanent happiness in this world. Then what is the way to have that permanent happiness, permanent joy? Is there any way? As Buddha had gone in search of the how to get rid of suffering, the existential suffering, suffering of being born as a human being, with all the changes that he found. And the very existence of human being seems to be full of suffering. And Buddha found out the nirvana. When you get rid of all the changes that goes on, when you accept the changes and the change of the body, and you attain to that intellect called bodhi, which knows that the changes are of the nature of the world, you are, then you see all your desires, expectations, wrong expectations, living in the changing world, and yet thinking yourself not to change, being born and yet to think that you will not die. All those wrong notions, you get rid of that by attaining that bodhi, that intellect, that wisdom, and then you attain nirvana. Nirvana is state of that bliss that peace that never leaves, that you attain. Sri Krishna said before Buddha, anityam asukham lokam, he understand the nature of the world, worldly life. It is impermanent 
and unhappy. Though you may find some little uh, spear that uh, some spears happiness, some like the um, fragments of happiness here and there, but it is in reality there is no happiness, and it is also temporary. Then what you need to do to get permanent bliss and eternity? Imam Prapya having attained this, Bhajaswa Maam, be connected to me, be connected to God, be connected to me that resides in your heart as yourself, be connected to that real self. I reside in your heart as your real self. You worship me outside as God. I reside in your heart as your true self, as your I, real I. Get connected to that and you will have eternal life, unchanging life, and this human existence which was anityam asukam becomes full of bliss and joy. That is the purpose of this human life that has been given. Every life has some purpose. The life, purpose of human life is to attain him, to attain spirit and have the spirit, live the spiritual life. Spiritual life gives us tremendous strength of mind, ability to stand terrible tragedies in life. How much is strong you become if we live a spiritual life? And what dedication can be there? Many of you have read Swami Chetanandji Maharaj's stories of the Vedanta monk. You'll find the stories of Monks all li lived a spiritual life. How dedicated, how given to the service, how happy and joyful, one-pointed. One story I found in other source was the story of Sivesh Shananda, Dwaraka Maharaj. His guru, Swami Shivananda, said, Sri Ramakrishna walks in this courtyard in Belurmat. See that there is no fallen dry leaf falls on the ground, remains on the ground. Keep it always tidy and clean. And he was so dedicated to clean that ground and remove the dry leaves. Whenever any leaf of the tree fell on that ground, he used to immediately rush and pick that up and put it in the trash bin. That was the life. And doing that, he lived the life of a great mythological, historical, that devotee lady called Shabari. Shabari, the lady who waited for God, whole her life, some, her guru had said, God will come to you. She doesn't know when he will come, what form he will come, what God will come, her guru has said. Every day she would to wait that God will come and God doesn't come. Next day she was never disappointed. Next day another chance to think of God. In waiting for God, he was, she was always waiting for God to come and her mind was fully given to God. She lived the life of dedication, full remembrance. In the thought of waiting for God, her whole heart became so purified that she became like a saint. Her life we read now, maybe Ramayana, it is the story of the Ramayana. And really one day Rama comes and she feeds him some wild fruits, tasting her first and that same fruit she gave to God. And God ate that without saying anything that it becomes stale or foul or anything, you have touched it, your leaves, nothing that. It was a great offering of sabari because she, she loved God. And this Swami, Dwaraka Maharaj, was also in thought of God. And whenever he heard the life of sabari he used to shed tears of joy because it tallied with his life waiting for God, seeing Sri Ramakrishna to walk in the, in the ground courtyard of Virulmat, and that life of ever remembering God, ever given to the thought of Sri Ramakrishna, that is a spiritual life. One point dedication to the service of Lord, thinking of God always, all the time, and doing something that God will not be troubled. So that was one life of dedication. 
another life as you read in our Maharaj's book about Bon Baba, Bon Bihari Maharaj, Swami Muktananda of Varanasi. He lived for 90 years and almost 60 years he worked in the hospital dressing the wounds of the people. And he used to do it so much love and dedication that people had come to believe that if he dresses up my wound, it will be healed. Not only the people, even the surgeons would say, Swami, if you dress, that person will be healed. Imagine what love, dedication, thought of God and prayer had gone in that service. What a spiritual life he led in common work, common his daily duty. He then retired, was old. Still he was to go to the hospital and do whatever time, little time he could do for the service of sick people, seeing them as veritable God. And what people saw? They saw God in that Bon Baba, Swami Muktananda, and they used to call him a living Shiva. There is a famous temple of Shiva in Varanasi called Vishwanath. That is the stone image. God is there, no doubt. But here is Sachala Shiva, moving Shiva, working Shiva, loving Shiva, who takes our care. That Shiva in the Vishwanath temple and the manifestation of Shiva in and through Muktananda or Bon Baba become one, life of spirituality, life of dedication, a life centered in God, which manifested as service to the children of God. We all know the story of Brother Lawrence of 17th century France. He was not even a monk. He was just working in a monastery. And suddenly deep thought came that in the winter, leafless tree, I thought, spring will come and it will have leaf. God is there. God works so fantastic. How the wisdom, how the thought, how seeing it, the tree which is perhaps as if it has no life, it has the life inside, God is working through it. That sort of wisdom came to that Brother Lawrence. And then after that, whatever work he did in the monastery, it was for the love of Jesus, love of God. He used to do simple works, cooking food, cleaning plates, and cleaning the monastery. Yet, we do not remember the monks of the time. We all remember and read this brother Lawrence who wrote a wonderful book called Practice of the Presence of God. God is present. You need to practice its presence. Then you will see. Sri Ramakrishna said, you don't see God, doesn't mean God doesn't exist. Can you see stars at daytime? Does it mean stars are not there? You can't see because there is the light that hides the stars. Like that your ego has hidden God. When you clear your ego, then you will find God present. God is reality. Sri Krishna, that's why, said, you work in this world, but remember me, whatever you work you do. Arjuna was a warrior. He was going to fight in the battle. Sikrana says, you do all the warfare, shoot your enemy, but remember me. Ma manusmara yudhyacha. It can be done that you remember God and yet you are engaged in battle. Such important thing. Once arrow shoots you and you are dead. In that condition also, you can put your mind fully on God and go on doing your duty. duty. So if Arjuna can fight the battle and yet remember God, we, our work is not that serious. We can definitely remember God in our work. We can definitely do practice of the presence of God happens then. Our Patanjali, the great psychologist, he said, why do we forget our true nature? Why we are not living a spiritual life? What is the root cause of our becoming worldly? He gave five reasons. 
He said, avidya asmita raga dvesa avinivesa. The first cause, the root cause, that we have become worldly, we lead a worldly life, we forget God, we forget our true, immortal, blissful nature and consider ourselves as the changing entity, changing, bound, um, going through all the suffering, that entity. First reason is we have forgotten our true nature. Avidya, ignorance of our true self. Once we forget our true nature, then the worldly life starts. From spiritual life, we come to worldly life. What happens when we forget our spiritual nature? Then we become ego comes. I, that is separate from you, that is separate from world, which is unreal, which is the cause of ignorance, which is the cause of not knowing the truth. I, that the individuality is unreal and oneness is the reality. You have got that asmita, egoness, sense of individuality. When we have sense of individuality, I and the world, I and the you, immediately three other things come. What are that? Raga. You have, you divide the world into two. Some you like, some you don't like. People, things, situations, like, I like this, I don't like that. I like spring, I don't like winter. I like this place, I don't like that place. The whole world is divided into two. And whatever you like, you are attached to that. That's called raga or attachment. And whatever you don't like, then dvesha, the fourth of the cause of worldliness, according to Patanjali. And dvesha, aversion, dislike, hatred for what you have made on disliking. There is nothing that is in the, inherent in the thing that you dislike. You can like winter also. People are there who like winter. One uh, devotee from Toronto went to India during winter. She stayed there for two months. And she came back and said, oh, there is snow. Swami, I was missing snow in India. Elderly lady. But that can be there. You can enjoy winter. You can enjoy summer. Everything is joyful. A spiritual person is such person who will be happy in all situations. He will be happy in winter, in summer, in spring, in fall, every time. Everything has something to give, some charm to, to, to give to us. He, will be, he or she will be happy to meet all the types of persons in colleagues. He will be friendly to everyone in his office or work. That is the quality of a spiritual person who lives a spiritual life because he belongs to all. What Holy Mother said, no one is a stranger, my child. The whole world is your own. Learn to make the world your own. That's what he's saying, live a spiritual life, my child, says Holy Mother. No one is a stranger. All are your own self appearing as different persons. That is knowledge. And when you say, I, different, I will enjoy, I will have name and fame, and that is ignorance, that you have shifted from spiritual life to the worldly life. Live a worldly life and you'll find peace and joy, said Holy Mother. And after that comes avinivesha, a strong desire to live in this world with this body. So much so, always afraid of death, approaching death, and oh, one day I will die. Who is going to die? It is not I am dying. This body will die, which is a product of nature. It is not me. It is made from the nature. Air, water, earth, all these things made this body. This body has been has made a separate thing, and then it will again merge into its original form from gold, lump of gold, ornament is made, beautiful ornament. You melt and it goes back to its own gold nature. Like that is the material thing of the world, it goes back. So why should I consider that as me? I am not this, it belongs to nature, it has come from nature, it will go back to nature. That thing comes, something of the nature, something belonging to God. Then we start saying, oh, this is I, and I have so much attachment to this body, I don't want to let go of this. 
And seeing that everyone who is born dies, I think, oh, I will ever remain there. And the counting of life is there. How long can I live? 70, 80, 90. And now, nowadays they are saying 125. Someone said, oh, doctors are saying a human being can live 250 years. What after that, sir? After 250 years, then body will remain or go? After that also, body will die. Same thing will happen if not after 80 years. After 250 years, there is no solution. Death will be there. So, avinivesha, considering this, wanting to live always in this life, sorry. So that way, uh, that is also a cause of bondage. That is what makes us live not a spiritual life. We all try to live a spiritual life. And we don't know how much we have progressed, how much we have come through. We know what a spiritual life is. But sometimes we can test ourselves. Often we complain, I had a guru, and I got mantram, I got uh, uh, training, I attained the spiritual classes, I listened to the talks by this Swami, that uh, uh, scholar, yet I don't think I'm progressing even after 15 years of my um, coming to the spiritual fold. So that happens, but in fact we are all progressing definitely. Once we have come in this river of spirituality, we are progressing. If we listen and do what we are taught, sravana manana adityasana. When we practice what we have heard through the talk, through the speak, uh, through the lectures in the in the Vedanta Society, or through the talks on YouTube, or through the books that we read, we try to practice the thing. Then definitely we are progressing. They used to say to us, even the monks sometimes say, what progress have I made? To them they said, don't worry, you are all making progress. You are like a piece of rock that fell at the origin of river, Ganga River. Angular, rough surface, and uh, <laughs> like that. And then you started rolling with the water. Unknowingly, then you started being polished. And we come down to the plains, you have now become rounded, smooth, beautiful, shining. From rock, you have turned into emblem of Shiva. From kankar to shankar, as they say. Kankar is rock, a small piece of rock. Shankar is the Shiva, God. That will happen if you hold on to this flow of spirituality. Don't give up thinking that nothing has happened. Something is definitely happening within us. Otherwise, we won't come to Vedanta Society on a weekday after doing whole day's work. We won't be listening to the lectures by the swamis and scholars. We won't be reading scriptures. When we find interest in reading something change going within us, we are definitely progressing in spiritual life. Still, if you want to have the thing, how do we measure our spiritual progress, the spiritual growth, then we have to find something. When we grow spiritually, uh, we'll find our dispassion growing, passion loosening, becoming less. Dispassion is uh, not finding much interest to enjoy the world and worldly things. So that way we find that they become insipid, tasteless. The worldly enjoyment to which the worldly people so much hanker, they want to live for that worldly and for a spiritual person, a person who lives a spiritual life, that becomes tasteless and insipid. This passion grows more. More love for God grows. Instead of reading novel and watching some serial on the TV, you want to read something spiritual book. You want to watch uh, Swami speaking on a spiritual topic. That automatically happens. This passion towards the worldly enjoyment 
automatically comes when we grow spiritually. And we can judge. We can judge our own life. It may not be fully there, but we are on its way. It is growing. We are developing. We are progressing. Spiritual growth can be measured with non-possessiveness, decrease in worldly possessions. Sometimes we want to gather the things, collect the things. Oh, this is better. This jacket is so beautiful. We already have four jackets at home. Just something comes and that we want to buy. Grow spiritually? No, that doesn't matter. You don't, have, you don't find any interest. Earlier, this uh, window shopping would be very great thing, seeing these things and watching that thing. After that, you just walk on the ground, think to repeat the name of God, and you, that nothing attracts you. That comes non-possessiveness. That's what increases by when you grow spiritually. Detachment is another quality. That is spiritual quality of sign of spiritual progress. We are not bound to the things of the world. Not too much attached to this body. When it falls sick, we know it will be cured. When it becomes old, we accept it at the law of nature it will grow old. We don't get worried. And when first time you might have seen your gray hair, oh, I'm growing old. Someone said from brother to, to you, to uncle, oh, why are you saying uncle? I'm brother, I'm not that old. He said, no, it's oldness, oldness coming. <laughs> worried, getting old. But after that, you accept that, okay, this body will go grow old. That is the law of nature, you accept that. And then detachment and desire to remain static as such in this empirical world, which is made by God ever changing, going against the will of God, trying to impose our own will, which doesn't work, and you suffer. And then you accept that not attached to the things of the world. That is detachment gradually comes. That doesn't hamper our attachment to God, attachment to our duty to perform it well. Yoga, as they said, the person who is spiritual in nature, they are very good at, skillful at their work. Yoga, karma, su, kaushalam. They know how skillfully to perform the work without getting attached to the fruit of action. That is the skill needed for to live a spiritual life. And what is that skill? Don't get caught with the attachment and yet you perform the work with all sincerity. Mamanusmara Remember me and fight, O Arjuna. Remember God and perform your duty in the hospital, in the school, in the bank, anywhere. You just think of God. Offer your skill as your offering to God. And your whole work will become worship. And you will find inner peace and will be leading and growing in your spiritual life. Your spiritual life will bring more peace more contentment. Another sign is abstination and not greed. That is, you don't find things to, um, greed, greediness goes. So you find more self-control in the things of the world, whether it is food or any other thing. You have no strong inclination to have that and enjoy that particular food, particular object, particular scenario, you can abstinate from that. And that is a sign of spiritual progress. As I said, spiritual progress, Swami Vivekananda used to emphasize, it makes you stronger. You are no more under the sway of your mind, which says, oh, get it. Your intellect becomes sharp and controls your mind and says, no, that is not the way to lead a spiritual life. That is not the way to, be, to live a happy life. I know what to do. Nothing, no more you can want. Very tasty food, ice cream. And uh, one scoop and you file a good little. And then so tasty, you want another scoop to buy, give me two scoop. After that, you find that no, you can abstain from that. One scoop is fine, taste remains same. They say 
that always, Swami, I got um, diabetes. And uh, there were many well-wishers. And they say, you know, the um, thing for diabetes is, uh, is portion. Whatever is given, don't take the whole thing. Always take a little portion. Ice cream, sweet, chocolate. Don't take the whole of the chocolate. Take a small portion. It may satisfy your desire. And you didn't, you did not more anything of that. And yet uh, you are happy with what you have eaten. If you totally abstain without uh, having that uh, dispassion developed in you, uh, that you may feel, you may miss it. Oh, I couldn't have my chocolate. What this diabetes came? It ruined my life. You may think that way. But if you have little for the time being, then you have that food. Also, it doesn't do much harm, and you are satisfied. Also, a craving is gone. Gradually, with that. The time comes when you don't at all require anything that you had craving. Now you offer me sweet, I don't have to think, oh, sweet is bad for me. I just say, no, I, I don't eat it. I don't feel any attraction that it happens, this abstention from uh, desire that can happen. That has to be there. Otherwise, if we cannot control our greed, for eating or for seeing, for all any other enjoyment, then it is very difficult to lead a spiritual life. Full self-mastery. I know how much I can permit my mind to indulge or enjoy. Mind is fully under my control, under the control of my will. My will is not under control of my mind. That sort of mastery will come when we progress spiritually. Another sign of spiritual growth is contentment. You are satisfied. Contentment, they say, is undefined satisfaction. What is the difference between context, contentment and satisfaction? You were hungry, wanted to eat something, you ate a lot of food, you are satisfied. But you are not contented. You are con satisfied only in food. You have other desires. But in contentment, now you are satisfied, you are serene, you don't have much craving for anything. You are always happy and peaceful. Contentment is a sign of not fulfilling desires, but a sign of purity of mind. When mind becomes pure, then it can be controlled easily, and it doesn't hanker of the things of the world. You feel the peace of mind and feel contented without even trying being, being attracted to the things of the world. Contentment is a great spiritual quality. You can feel that, as I said about my own example of uh, sweets, that how taking the small portion, I feel now, I don't feel any attraction to eat sweets. And we all can progress spiritually in everything. Not only eating sweet, we don't become spiritual. Spiritual is abstention from all the enjoyments that drag us to the world, worldly enjoyments, and enjoying God's presence. Sri Ramakrishna asked Yam, what is vairagya, what is dispassion? And Yam said, it is dispassion is uh, not no, having no craving for the worldly things. Vairagya. Renunciation. Sri Ramakrishna said, no, that is not full. Not having any attraction toward the worldly things, but having attraction towards God makes one full renunciation or dispassion. Unless you have attraction towards somewhere, your mind will not float. Just give up. And you don't give anything for it, the more enjoyable. When you get something great, of greater joy, then only you can give up the thing of lesser joy. That is a spiritual life. Spiritual life is not only negating the things. Don't enjoy, don't eat, don't be attached. Not that. Get attached, but attached to God, which is the symbol of joy. Don't enjoy the world, but enjoy the presence of God. Don't enjoy the scenarios and the songs that uh, excite you in the worldly, for the worldly enjoyment, but enjoy the devotional songs and nice, soothing music. There is always that way. It is to be replaced in a spiritual life. It is very fulfilling life. The spiritual life, that's why, is a life of contentment. <clears throat> you don't hanker towards the world, but you are contented 
with the divine feeling. You are friendly to all. What a great joy to be friend with everyone. What a great joy to be of help to everyone. You feel like that in a spiritual life. In the spiritual life, it is very energetic life. Not a sluggish, tired, doing nothing life. Very energetic life. When we lead a life of purity, there is in the body, there is the conservation of energy. And contentment and purity creates continence in our life. And that continence creates greater energy, mental energy, physical energy. And that energy is directed towards spirituality. And then the spiritual awareness comes more and more. Spirituality is very fine thing, subtle thing. And worldliness is gross. So that energy that is conserved as, as the energy obtained by the, by the practice of continence is useful and more, it's more, you know, blessing, greater blessing to human being, to us, for leading us in our spiritual progress. Spiritual person, when you grow spiritually, we delight in good and not in evil. Wherever something is good in some person, some other person doing something good, you feel happy. Jealousy is gone. You don't, comp you don't place yourself, oh, I didn't get that and he or she got that. You don't say that. Someone is doing something. Someone is happy. A smiling face somewhere will give you, make yourself smile. That will be there. You delight in, in the happiness of the world, in the good of the world. And if you analyze yourself, it is all qualities are always there. You don't, you, when you, someone smiles, you are always happy. You don't think about anything about yourself and why this person is so happy and why I am not happy. You don't think that way. Another is happy, then you are also happy. Then you say, as um, Swamiji um, chanted that, Madhu Vata Rita Yate Madhu Ksharanti Sindhava. When we are fully spiritually aware, lead a really spiritual life, everything becomes joyful and sweet to us. And what everything? The air, the forest, the trees, plants, sunlight, dust of the earth, human beings, everything and everyone becomes so joyful if we live a spiritual life. It is so important for us. And spiritual life is such thing that, that all of us can live and you progress. You progress in spiritual life. Spiritual life is the life of transformation from what we are today to what is the goal. What is the goal? In, in the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says, the goal of a spiritual person are he enumerates 26 things and he calls his divine qualities. Divine it is called. Our soul is divine. Swami Vivekananda said his soul is potentially divine. And those qualities gradually come when we progress spiritually. What are the, those qualities? It says fearlessness. You are not afraid of anything. Not much of afraid of anything. Mostly we are afraid of disease, old age, and death. That also, we, okay, what is there to be afraid? This body we have got, when it will fall sick, you have to go to doctor. And whatever doctor will treat that, you will have to accept. What is there to be afraid of? What will happen to the body? If it is treated well, you come back. If it is not treated, you are, um, you are meant to not survive, you will die. What is there to afraid? Everyone dies one day. If you don't die today, after five years, after 15 years, after 50 years, you will have to die. Why to be afraid of death? It is inevitable. So that's how we get fearless, one spiritual quality. Purity of heart. When heart is pure, it becomes free from worldly desires, from envy, from jealousy, from greed, from hatred. Those are all the impurities of the heart. They just go away. You don't feel envious to anyone. You lose hatred. I hate that person. I hate that thing. It's too strong a word even to use. 
to hate someone it is very strong why will you hate someone you may not have full liking for that you may dislike that person but to hate is a very strong word so like that you don't hate anyone that is what the sign of purity of heart you you can adjust and make yourself explain that people are of various kinds their god has made them various ways and all are meant to live in the world as god has made good people there are not so good people in the world good world has to be always a mixture of good and bad if everything is good in the world then world doesn't remain world world ceases to be world if it is not a mixture of good and bad day and night pairs of opposites then the concept of heaven comes it will become heaven we are in the world let it remain world it is a mixture of good and bad we can become spiritual and by accepting the thing as they are and charity is another divine quality when we try to help others self restraint always seeing that this is good or not if it is good i just abstain from that sacrifice of your own thing that is also very much spiritual quality another spiritual quality secret is study of the scriptures called swadhyaya that is a spiritual quality divine quality he says austerity austerity is like a little not giving to luxury it is a little like a negative word but austerity doesn't mean that in a best way explained is it is tapas or uh practice of concentration grow it grow in making more energy giving more energy to our body that's what the austerity means for austerity people do some things like uh, and they keep fasting that's one kind of austerity that they do and that also is a kind of having the control to eat mind says we have to eat every day i say no i don't have to i can i can control eating today so that becomes fasting that becomes austerity not giving too much luxury straight forwardness non injury ah non injury is a great spiritual quality ahimsa it is called and in some religions that grew in india it call ahimsa paramo dharma it is the greatest virtue is ahimsa non injury non injury doesn't mean just uh, non killing non injury means not disturbing others not thinking ill of others by our thought or speech or work not that only action but by even speech you don't hurt others with your speech you don't think of ill about others that becomes full non injury or ahimsa great spiritual quality truthfulness such a wonderful and very important spiritual quality if you can hold on to truthfulness all other qualities will come absence of anger akrodha anger often comes with some desire as it is said unfulfilled desire blasts as anger so so if we can mellow down the desire and uh, then there will be no uh, you can handle the desire if it is not fulfilled so absence of anger uh, renunciation as i said loving god and not being attracted to the worldly things peacefulness aversion to slander sometimes um, um, speaking the good thing to others and you don't have any ill feeling towards other compassion to living beings Sri Ramakrishna was once saying to his devotees about how a devotee should live, and he said, "Nami ruchi, jive daya, and Vaishnav uh, Shiva." He said, "Serving the devotees of God, and a liking for repeating God's name, and jive daya, and compassion to living beings." And he said, "Why compassion?" no compassion compassion means oh i am so so kind to you that i am greater and i have to do some kindness to you i am compassionate to your suffering he said not compassion but serving others seeing them as the manifestation of god shiva gyane jiva seva see god in everyone and try to serve them and fulfill their needs as much as you can it is a privilege to be at at the same level and to be of help to them feel it your privilege as swami vivekananda said to one person whom he had said 
give in charity, be connected with the world, you have earned so much, you live only for yourself, that's why you are not happy. If you get connected, share your, um, your wealth to others, you will be happy. First, that person didn't like, Rockefeller, went home and thought on these words which came from the mouth of a saint. There was so much power behind that. It changed the mind of that person. He wrote a check for charity and came next day and said to Swami Vivekananda, see this check, Swami Vivekananda, and said to Swamiji, now you should thank me, said Rockefeller. Swamiji said, no, not I should thank you. You should thank me because I have shown you the way to peace and joy by being connected to the world, by being charitable to the world, by starting your spiritual journey. You have started living a spiritual life. That's why you feel happy. All happiness because you have started living a spiritual life. Like that, there are 26 qualities enumerated Sri Krishna in the 16th chapter, first three verses of the 16th chapter of the Gita. And he says, these are all divine qualities. And those are the spiritual traits in a person who is spiritually evolved. We are also trying to become spiritual, lead a spiritual life. And we, after knowing that, we try to find out, we try to compare how much I am fearless how much I am charitable, how much I slander others, how much I care to not injure or disturb or hurt others, like that by trying and seeing mananam, as I said, listening, then thinking about what I have heard, reading and then trying to say how much I practice, I can increase the practice of spiritual qualities and lead a spiritual life and to the finally to become mature in spirituality and realize the truth of my real self that is transcending the empirical self of body and mind and being established in my real self of the Atman or that spirit that is not worldly, that is not bound by the law of the world of uh, time, space, and causation, which is infinite, free, limitless, and blissful. That is my real nature, realizable, knowable, experienceable by the practice and living a spiritual life. Thank you very much. We are very grateful to Swami. He gave a wonderful lecture and I listened to every word he said. As I told you from the beginning that a spiritual life is understood by different people in different ways. And when we were talking, I was, do you know what I was thinking? To me, how can I evaluate you whether you are spiritual or not? I really want to evaluate you or myself. With the weighing machine, I cannot weigh the spirituality. With the measuring tape, I cannot measure the spirituality. To me, two things please watch. First, watch your ego. Sri Ramakrishna said, if the thread has many fibers, it does not go in the eye of a needle. Ego is a great obstacle in a spiritual life. For the reason all religions talk about humility, be humble. Second, that is your one side. The other side, unselfishness. If you check yourself or others, whether that person is unselfish or not. Swamiji says, selfishness is sin, unselfishness is God. That is the two ways you can measure your spiritual life. Do I have ego? Am I unselfish? Ask these two questions, then you will understand what is going on. How to measure? I should, when he was talking, I was thinking about a monk who came to, he was a disciple of Swami Shankarananda. And he was trying to get some 
inspiration from his guru. Do you know what he said? Maharaj, 20 years I am in the monastery. But I do not feel the type of longing, yearning, and love for God. I don't have that thing. I am 20 years in the monastery. I am 20 years in the monastery, I am not getting that kind of yearning, longing for God. And Shankaranda ji told him, go home. Maharaj, I am a monk, go home right now. Maharaj, he could not believe that the guru will send the disciple to home who is a monk. Go home. Then he said, Maharaj, when you will go home, you will see your friends, your brothers, other people, how they are living lives. Some have financial problems, some have disease, some do not fighting husband and wife, children are not well, they have not sufficient money for education. You will see these things. Then you will understand that what you, you are getting in the monastery. Then do you know what he said? That renunciation, that purity, that longing are now one in your bloodstream, which is hidden. You do not see it. But the moment you go to another environment, you can see what is different. If you take a fish from the water and put it on the ground, it will flops and flounders and it will die. Similarly, a spiritual person, if I throw you into the worldly people, you will feel terribly uncomfortable. Oof, this is not my place. Oof, this is not my place. That is the way you can evaluate sometimes whether you are in the spiritual track or not. Anyhow, that is the way I think about a spiritual life. I could reach, sometimes I think how Godless life, how can people live in this world? It is unbearable, painful. <laughs> Anyhow, he gave a very wonderful talk. Thank you, brother, coming to us. Um Stapakaisa Dharma is a Sarva Dharma Sarupine, Abhutara Bhurishtaiva Ramakrishna Yatinama. Yunarim Sarudam Devim Ramakrishna Jagat Gurum Padapad Betay Shritva Pranamami Mohan Mohan Namashri Yati Rajayo Vivekananda Surai Satchit Sugasarupayo Samineta Padini Om Shanti Shanti Shanti